welcome back guys for a new video this is larry from only big time y'all already know what's going on today i'm bringing you guys back with a new video today we're going to talk about the four the four and ultimate four red flag in any college soccer program out there only four only four and then again Stick to the end for the last one because you want to stick for that last one. But before we jump into today's topic, you guys make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Make sure you guys like the video. Share the video with your uncle, your niece, your sister, your brother that play college soccer out there. It's going to help them. Um, they're still in high school. They're looking for a new program. Please make sure you guys hit the follow. Make sure you guys share the video with them. This is going to be really helpful. So let's not um, waste a lot of time. Let's jump right into it. For our first red flag in this video, we're going to talk about bad communication from coaches guys i put myself as a player right or as a human being if i'm a human being and i play soccer i watch football i love it okay i'm gonna put myself in a, in, a, in a shoe of a coach right if you want me to play for you you gotta have some type of an mv you gotta have some type of energy towards me playing for you so if if i'm telling you that i'm coming for for a campus tour I, I, I want to see the campus. I want to see what's going on of, of, over there in, 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 in um, Kansas City, Kansas. I want to come and see the campus. I, 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 want, I, want, I want to come to Loyola, Chicago to see the campus. I, I, I want to come to, 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 to Minnesota, to Minnesota, Twin City, Minneapolis to see the campus. Of course, I want the coach to be high. I want the coach to, to, to carry that positive attitude, to keep giving me that energy. But look, when the coach does not give you consistency as far as energy, you can tell. You can tell. He doesn't follow the text messages or the phone call. He's not being as excited as he was at the first message. And then you still send text messages. One, two, three, four, five follow up. And then the coach still doesn't answer you. Go ahead and move on, bro. Let me tell you, sis, let me tell you something, sis. If a coach wants you, they're going to come get you. Let me tell you something. This, this is for everybody, any sport, actually, because we just focus on college soccer right now, but this is any sport. If a coach wants you, they're going to come and get you and show you that they want you. They're going to make sure everything that you need is given. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of y'all players be abusing some time of the power. But let me tell you something, right? A coach, they're busy people. I do understand during recruiting period, that's one of the busiest time for coaches. They're busy. They got to recruit. Make sure they have the program lined up. Make sure they have a tactic. Make sure they have a plan for the following season. This is understandable. This is at any level of work. This is at any level of job. This is this is any position that you, you have of you had where you have to plan you know, this video was planned ahead of shooting. I have my notes here. I'm, as, I'm, as I'm explaining the video, I'm reading my notes. So, obviously, college coaches, they're busy. They need to recruit players. They need to get a roster before the season starts. So, they're busy, right? So, it doesn't excuse them for the fact that they need to follow the player. Do I want a player? Do I do not want a player? I have to let the player know, hey, I do not want you or I do not plan on having you in my team. Hey, I plan on having you. I plan on wanting you in my team. I plan on playing you this amount of time and that amount of time. And then as the season go, as you perform, as we go, we're going to see what you need and how we can adjust things. But straight on the go, that's that's kind of an issue of bad communication from coaches. And we've, we've seen that a lot. We've seen that a lot. A lot of players out there, they get lead and then they don't, they don't, they ended up in program they don't want to be. They ended up in program they don't want to be. And then when they realize that they're into program they don't want to be, it's too late. It's too late to change. It's too late to change. I'm sorry to tell you guys. You guys want to make sure you guys, um, 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 obviously you can, you, you, you don't know what, if your coach is going to be perfect or not. You don't know. They're human beings. Right. They're human beings. Coaches are human beings. Nobody's perfect. But I just want to make sure yeah, you follow with the coach. You go with the coach. And you understand that when you see this bad sign, this is not looking good for you on the long run. So it's up to you now. You make your choice if you want to keep playing for that coach or not. You make you make your choice. And then whatever choice you make, do not come and cry later. <laughs> All right. Number two here of the red flag for any soccer program red flag. We have limited playing time. Let me tell you something, y'all. Let me tell you something, y'all. 
playing opportunity, starting position, being realistic, look around and find your way out. Let me repeat this one more time for people that didn't understand. Playing opportunity, starting opportunity, be realistic, or look around and find your way out. This is literally all I have to tell you for limit playing time. Because let me tell you something. A lot of guys or a lot of girls, this is anybody. You guys go to this college team or college program. You excited. I got a new shirt. They got me a new pair of boots. You know, I got this, like Nike, the Vapor. I got this Copa Adidas. I got a nice shirt, a gym, a, a gym shirt, whatever. They're going to give you gift. They're going to give you everything. But let me tell you something. Remember why you're there for. Remember why you there for. The reason of you being there is to get playing time. How do you get playing time when you're on the bench? Is there another way to get playing time? That I wasn't aware of? I thought you're supposed to be on the field. Why are you on the bench? Oh. And I'm not talking about it. Just so we're honest on the same page. I'm not talking about the athlete that is not actually going to practice. I'm not talking about the athlete that is not performing. I'm talking about the top athlete right here. You are here. You're doing your due diligence, right? You're playing. You're showing up. You're working out. You're doing your thing and you feel like you can compete with the team, but you're not getting your playing time. Why not? Why not? Why not? Well, in this situation, if you find yourself in that situation, you want to go talk to the coach. You want to go talk to the coach and tell him and express how you feel about the situation. You're not getting your playing time because X and Y. And then the X and Y got to be backed up by your performance on the field. Because you're not just going to go and see your coach and tell him, hey, I'm not playing, I'm not performing. I, I want more playing time. This is not how thing goes. This is just like asking for, for, for salary increase at a job. Why do we need to increase your salary? Right? Same thing. You need to prove that you deserve a salary. And now that you prove that you deserve playing time, now you can go talk to the coach. If, if uh, You cannot be doing good and you're not on the field. This is not right. This is practice. This is this is a red flag. Players that do good and they don't play games, that's red flag. That is red flag. I'm sorry. That that is a big red flag. You got to look around and start looking for other opportunities because there's school out there that want to play you. There's no school out there that going to make you start because you deserve to start. You're a starter. So there's a school out there that will make you start. Obviously. Guys, Guys, we're in 2024, guys. There's a lot of program out there. There's a lot of way of reaching out, coach. Do not get caught in that small bubble to think that, hey, this is what I make. I make a wrong choice. I cannot move out of here. I'm stuck. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not. I'm sorry. Reach out for opportunity for help. You're not. I'm sorry. You better reach out and seek for help. You got to be realistic with yourself here. The coach will not play you. He will not play you. That's it. You got to make peace with it. Or you got to move. Look around and look for another opportunity. And deep. Then that's up to you. That's up to you. I can, I can just give you the advice that I think those are the sign or the advice on how to get out of those situations. I'll give you sign. I give you the red flag. You do what you want to do with it. But if if I were you though, <laughs> guys, by the way, if you get to this point of the video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, guys. Guys, show us love. Make sure you love the video. You like the video. You share the video with your friend. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let's go. Third red flag on a college soccer program. If you go to a college soccer program and you go visit a coach and then the coach tells you that he wants you to sign on the spot, on the dot. Go ahead, turn around for me and leave this part. If a coach ever told you to go ahead and sign the contract or any intent letter 
on the spot or you while you on tour the campus and they tell you they promise you starting position playing time and everything that comes with it go ahead and clock out for me sir mom that would not work that would not work you singing a pack with hell right now well again that's not for most coaches but that is for the most part of it that's for the most part of it only a few coaches out there you would not even do that you would not even do that why would you force to sign a player on the first tour on campus why would you why, why would you why would you force a player to sign why would you it's an intent it's a choice it's a decision it's a decision that's going to impact the college future I'm, I'm sorry the, the the player future so the player should be able to make decision regarding their future on their own or with their family why would why would a player sign just because you're pressuring him for playing time um, um all the gift coming along with this is not how things work and this is no the right way to operate if a college program ever tells you or a coach anybody in the coaching staff tell you to sign a paper or an intent to you know to go to a specific school just because you went there on two and they promised you playing time, sir, you don't know what you're putting yourself into. You do not want to sign that unless you actually talk to your to your peers before you sign that contract. Just so you know, I'm just giving you guys advice. You guys do what you guys do with it. But again, if you guys need help, please reach out. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see what we can do to help. But as far as signing a contract on the first visit too, it's crazy to me. It is crazy. And I've seen it. I keep seeing it every day. I keep seeing it every day. Like, what should you like on the first tour that you sign? Like, like I got it. If you go to big programs, there's so many big programs. How are you going to just sign without seeing what else is out there? How? Let me know. Let me know. How are you just going to sign without knowing what is out there, bro? That's crazy to me. That is insane to me. Insane behaviors, guys. Guys, let's not look. I, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. You should not feel pressure to commit at any point during the recruiting process. Let me tell you this. Let me repeat this. You should not feel any pressure at any time during the recruiting process you should not feel any pressure it's all about you your decision what you want to do where you want to be what makes you happy and what you feel you content with the situation as far as the school and the program this is how it goes you now you reach out for peers you talk to the coach you talk to the teammate you talk to the ex-player you reach out for your friend you ask for people on campus hey what do you guys think? Do you guys like this? What do you guys like about this? You check out the team record. You check out the old players. You check out the transfers. You check out everything. You want to make sure everything is on your side. This is how you want to operate when you being a recruit. Do not just go there and sign, sell yourself into, in, into the vulture, man. Think about your life, man. Make the right decision, y'all. Make the right decision. I'm here to help you guys make the right decision. I'm here to help you guys. Guys, guys, I'm here to help you guys make the right decision. <laughs> the fourth point of the video, which is going to be a lot, a lot of coaching staff and roster changes, which let me tell you guys something. Let me tell you guys something. If you're about to commit, right? Let me tell you guys something. If you're about to commit in a soccer program, right? If you're about to commit, you did your due diligence, you look around for a college program, and then you look at college program with 40, 50 players on the roster every year. Guys, <laughs> I think it's time for you to turn around, man. Don't, do not look back. Do not look back at all. Do not look back at all. Can somebody explain to me right now, right now, as, we, as we're talking right now, can somebody explain to me how a college soccer team has 50 plus players on their roster? And I'm not talking about they have two teams, right? One team, 50 players on the roster, 40 plus. 
How? Dude, we just need 11 players on the field. 11 players versus 11 at practice. Now, let me tell you something. I, I would be so understandable if you tell me you got 10 other players. That would be 30, right? 30, not too bad. 27, 28. That, that's around the average of a soccer roster, right? Anywhere you go, that's around the average. 50, 40? Guys, y'all ain't all seeing the field. Like, what's, what's new? Like, like, you guys are not seeing the field. How, how you how you, how you guys gonna see the field? We only need eleven players. You only need eleven players, and then that's thirty nine player on the bench. Who's gonna play or not? Well, who who's gonna play or not? Well, first of all, if you do not have a scholarship, you most likely not to play in those situations. Let me tell you: if you do not have a scholarship, you most likely not to play. Going. For a soccer program with high amount of roster, with a high roster, with a high number for roster. Guys, you want to make sure you stay away from this program. You want to make sure you stay away. Protect yourself. Guys, let me tell you something. If every year, right, we have a roster of 40, 50 guys, right? Every year, we have a roster of 40, 50 guys. But every year, we're recruiting 5 to 10 guys. Guys, why are people leaving? I'm curious. And the people that are leaving, where are they going? Why are the players leaving? If the program is good, if the program is solid. How do you build, keep, how do you build team chemistry out of 40, 50 guys? Guys, this is not football. How, how do you build team chemistry out of 40 guys? Explain it to me. I don't understand. A roster of 40, 50 guys. How, how do you build chem team chemistry? Guys, we've, we've, I've seen enough in college soccer. Guys, it, it cannot shock me anymore. I'm just sharing my thought with y'all. How, how do you build team chemistry? How do you know who's the who, 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 who's going to be the number 10? How, how, how do you know all that? How do you know all that? How do you know all that? With one head coach and two assistant coach and one goalkeeper coach. How, how do you going to know out of the 40, 50 guys who does what? It, it, it's, it, it gets complicated. It gets complicated. It gets complicated. It gets in a situation where you don't, you don't even want to get in those type of situation. You do not want to get in those type of situation. So if it happens that you find yourself in this type of situation, please reevaluate yourself on the spot. And figure out what you want to do moving forward. Because the program is not moving forward for sure. <laughs> Let me tell you that. The program is for sure not moving forward. So if you want to move forward, please, it's time for you to pack your baggage and leave. It's time for you to pack your baggage and leave. I'm sorry. That's, that's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. If you stay to the end of the video, I appreciate you. Make sure you guys hit the follow. Make sure you guys like the video. I have a lot more red flag uh, um, content to share with you as far as college soccer. So please make sure you guys don't miss any of my red flag content. Um, I like you guys. I appreciate you guys. See you at the next video. Oh, big T!